Oh, baby, girlfriends! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're in the Kyber Empire right now, watching yours truly, the king of trippy, God's gift, the mobile game, the eighth day of freaking creation that they left out of the book. But let's not get into that. What we're talking about today is we're talking about all the future upcoming cards that are confirmed coming to Marvel Snap. And holy cow, we have a lot of fun ones that we want to put on your radar, but join with me today because I can't read cards on my own. It's just too much for one King of Trippy to handle. So we're getting the <laughs> second upcoming King of Trippy themselves, Mobile <laughs> Gamer! In the words of Mobile Gamer, what's up, my guy? <laughs> Oh my guy how's it hanging <laughs> we're doing great i'm really excited to do this video with you. we already made a video on his channel check it out car in the top right hand corner it's more or less going to be kind of similar but you know what we as we're going to that video we learned some other things that we want to put on your radar let's get you guys on over here we have a lot of cards that are unreleased that are data mined we're going to basically go over the cards that are confirmed come the marvel snap in the foreseeable future but obviously there's a lot of data mined cards like look, uncle ben there's an uncle ben unreleased version but we don't know if that's ever coming to the game. What we're gonna go over are the cards that we definitively know are coming to Marvel Snap. And I'm gonna steal a little trick from Mobile Gamer that he showed in his video. If you uh, organize by quality, filter by unowned, it shows you the cards that are still not in gaming or you haven't seen, like that's Ghost Spider. I haven't seen Ghost Spider yet, but we have cards like this, Hit Monkey, and others that we're gonna go over Kane that are confirmed coming to Marvel Snap sometime in the near future. Trick. Yeah, oh, okay, so here's the other trick. We don't know if this is intended or not, but if you want to see what these cards do without having to go to a third party website, you click on that, you click on base card, click on the artist, and boom. boom. Ooh. It, does, it doesn't give you the power or the cost, yeah. but it gives you the text at the time. And this card right here actually said plus three for a while and it changed to plus two. And so everything in this video is subject to change yes. uh, they can change at any time but the information is accurate as of today well what's not subject to change if you hit like on this video and subscribe to both our channels i got uh, i'm gonna expedite one of these unreleased cards to get into your inventory for free so make sure you stick around at the very end mobile gaming are, are putting it on the expedited process it's not it's this is not a scam don't forget about that <laughs> so let's get into it. we're gonna talk about the season pass card for the upcoming season is it's uh, it's next season right inside of uh what a boy march is already coming around the corner this is gonna be the season pass card hit monkey and then we're also gonna go over the season pass card that's coming out in april hit monkey i want you to take over what's your thoughts on this card right here oh yeah this seems like well first of all game plus two power game plus three power seems broken right yeah uh, but even if you play this like with one other card it's a 2-2 two -two. if you play with two extra cards it's a 2-2 two -two. but i think there's going to be a ton of ways of playing this on turn six Oof. with quinjet sarah. sarah i don't know there's going to be like a million ways of making this a 2-8 two, two whatever right it's i know this is going to be strong yes uh what I what it comes to my mind when I'm looking at this is every season they try to boost a particular subset of cards. Silver Server targeting three cost cards, Modoc targeting discard cards, yada yada. You Dude. get the drill. This is targeting spam everything type of deck. So Sarah, Thanos, Quinjet, things that are throwing a lot of cards down. This yeah. is gonna be helpful. So I think we were saying at best, this is gonna be a two cost. And then if you let's say drop six more cards on uh turn six, that's 12. So a two cost, 12 power, that's a pretty good bank per buck value. You know, that's really darn good. And I think there's gonna be ways you can maybe Quinjet it and uh, Moon Girl it, and then you can have one, two cost, one, one cost. And right. yeah, so there's gonna be ways to get lots of hit monkeys. You can probably play two hit monkeys onto the field. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. My only concern right now with the buff, the Sandman, is this gonna shut that down? Probably, we have to wait and see if Sandman's gonna solidify its meta position, which I wanna say, you and I called it. We called that there was going to be some changes to Sandman. I just want to say we're geniuses. Don't want to toot our own horn, but... You also called the chan the changes to Thanos yeah. also. Mm -hmm. I still think Thanos needs a little bit more. I feel like he's like destroy all the cards in his zone or something cool. You know, it's... But I did get the, the, the big power. Well, that's a controversial take. A lot of people yeah. think that Thanos didn't need a buff and he was already the best mm, deck in the game. They're wrong. Just like they're wrong that Galactus was trash. Now people are saying, oh, Galactus is terrible. I've been saying that for months. Again, God's gift to mobile gaming here. That trumps anyone else's opinion. And don't forget about it. Let's move on. Mobile gamer's favorite song that he has as a ringtone. Baby, shaka, did it, did it. 
<laughs> it we, is my favorite song. Yeah, it's a uh, my name is Jeff. This is uh we boy, I gotta say a lot of these cards, we, we're not gonna know how they work truly until we actually play with it. But uh, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity with this. But with Jeff the Baby Shark, you can move this once. Nothing can stop you from moving or playing this to any location. So right before we were making our video, someone said in the chat, could you move this to an opponent's side of the field? I don't think that's gonna happen. The, what, the thing that came to our mind initially is that this could help you get into Professor X, help you get to, you know, a miniaturized lab. That's what I expect this car to do. It seems like a slightly better version of Nightcrawler. I don't know, are we missing another angle on this perhaps? Uh, maybe Space Throne, right? Space Throne, that's, isn't that weird thinking you can have two cards on Space Throne, so. Yeah, I mean, that extra little bit of power might help. I don't know. The thing that I have what, is... What uh, if there's a way of putting five cards in a location? I don't think that's what it means. No. But it, it, it's the way a lot of these cards are worded really weird and nothing can stop you. Wow, that's those, those, that's a lot of words right there. It, nothing is a very powerful thing. So, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I'm like, I think like even in Professor X, let's say Professor X locks on a zone. Like, you know, sometimes people do that stupid little Professor X cheese where they just lock down a zone they're like ah, oh, i won you can be just squeezing jeff in there and then you both tie and they don't win that zone with professor x i don't know uh this is it's one of those that could be interesting i like cheap cards that have some fun stuff in regards to it we just don't know the entirety of it but some people thought maybe you can move it to the opponent's side because if nothing can stop you why can't you play this card on the other side of the field clog up a zone perhaps time will tell if you can clog up the opponent's zone i, I think that'd be a little bit more interesting speaking of interesting I feel bad. You were kind of hyped on this card, and I kind of shut you down. I was like, I don't know if it works like that. Uh, how about you explain? How do you? How did you think this originally worked? And maybe you, it could work uh, like the way you said. I don't know if it's going to work okay. like that. So there's a couple of different ways this could work, you know, because the, the question is, is this better than Sandman? You know, if you have Quinjet, then it costs zero. Or if not, is this better than Sunspot? Sunspot. You know, if we have Quinjet, then you can play it for zero. Can you play it more than once on the same turn and bring it back to your hand? Probably not because that would be broken mm -hmm. can you return it to your hand on the same turn that you play it okay so can you do it every turn or is it in every other thing and then i think the way that you explained it is you turn one you play it turn two you bring it back to your hand it goes up in two power turn three you play it then you bet so on and so that it alternates we actually just don't know we don't know uh yeah if it works like the, the where you only can it's every other turn you bring it back you know it's not as crazy but still if you think about it if you can get this to even one six that's still decent power and i think the way i said it on your video is that this is kind of like a budget vision where your vision can kind of move wherever you know you can maybe you know sometimes you might want to trigger an effect and then sorry i want to bring it like let's say let's imagine this you want to try to win the raft right you play it on the raft you take it back you move the cards somewhere else so it's going to give you flexibility to move around and as you move it you gain some power and then you brought up the idea of quinjet you would need to maybe clone this card to get it to drop down in price to play the quinjet and make it a, a zero cost card but if you can make this a zero cost card or elysium you know there might be some location that make this a free card perhaps so there's going to be i think some fun use out of it i like one yeah. cost cards what'd you say Bast, Bast, Bast will work for this card for sure. Bast, I mean, I guess, I guess you could also use Mr. Negative on this, but I feel like if you're bringing up Mr. Negative, that's a little too late to bring out Kitty Pride. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be an interesting one. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the one I'm hyped the most about, but it depends how it reads. If it's gonna read constant power every turn, you can keep bringing it back. Different story. Master Mold. This one's also gonna be quite interesting. It seems like it's gonna be a possible answer for one of two things. One, we talked about Dracula. Because with this, you're going to add two Sentinels to your opponent's hat. And this is going to be a lot dirtier than it sounds. But with Dracula, why is this going to screw the guy up? Oh, I mean, you can play this on the last turn, and then it adds two Sentinels, and then what? You, they're, they're not going to get their Apocalypse, right? They're going to get a three power. But the other thing that's going to happen is if you play it early in the game, you know, there you can only have seven cards in your hand. Yeah. You can't get through these Sentinels. Then maybe, I mean, it's like, what's that location? Triscalion or however you say yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's If you don't play a card, you're not drawing. But you know, it's your hand is full. So if you can clog your opponent's hand with the cards like this or Black Widow, uh, then maybe, uh, you know, playing Maximus doesn't feel so bad. Uh, maybe if they're not drawing cards, then Darkhawk is allowing them to have more cards in their deck. There's a lot, maybe Ronin will be viable. There's yeah, a Ronin. will work with this, I, I, I see. I think what you gotta, you gotta explain though, how, how this is really dirty. The dirty thing is, it, it basically, it's kind of a secret subtext. It's basically, if your opponent has no way of dealing with it, instead of them having a max hand of seven, 
they only have a max hand of five of useful cards because if every time you play sentinel it's gonna put sentinel back in your hand so almost if you have no way of discarding it out of your hand the, and disabling like maybe you have to play zero and then play master or, or play the sentinel uh it's gonna clog your hand up and then you brought up the idea of dark hawk if they can't draw cards that means their deck is staying pretty big uh this is i think is a lot dirtier then it's gonna sound it really seems like there's only a few decks that i'd like this if you play this and your opponent has a dino deck they'll like it but i feel like most people find this really annoying to deal with. i think this is gonna be it's gonna be a good control card controlling what cards your opponents can get Ooh. in their hand yeah i like it next card here this is probably easily in my top three cards i'm looking forward to negasonic teenage warhead this is oh man it's really dirty i want you to read it go read show me your reading skills right. After any card is played here, destroy this card and that card. And I think this is going to be amazing on turn five, let's say, when you have priority, when you're winning a location, and that's situational, of course, but then it basically is going to lock up that lane uh, or make it challenging for your opponent to get ahead. And if you have priority, you play it on turn five, you know, whatever they play in that lane that's exploded on turn six, they're, if, if nothing if nothing happens, they don't play into that lane, you're still ahead on turn six. And for them to take over that lane, then they're gonna have to play another card or, or two cards rather. I mm -hmm. mean, it feels like Spider-Man kind of does something like that, locks up a lane on turn five. I think Negasonic is gonna be able to do that. And plus there's gonna be obvious synergies with cards like Death, and null in any kind of destroy decks. Yeah, when, uh, when we were talking, the first thing that came to my mind was Moon Girl. You clone Negasonic and you can play two of them. You can play two of them on turn five and basically you're planting landmines onto the field or turn six, you play them in the zones you're winning. And when your opponent's trying to make an effort to win those zones, oops, sorry. You know, I'm going to pitch it this way. Remember there was this one card called Leader? I don't know. I, 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 there, yeah. I, I hear rumors about this card. I never yeah, see the guy. Card. Yeah, he's. He, yeah. yeah, God. That, he, he's, he, yeah, that was the ultimate get wreck nerd nerf that I've ever seen I in my life. That card, my goodness. Yeah, but this is kind of the. It's almost. It's almost like a Terran Six leader, I think, where you're not copying your opponent's cards in a zone. You're just gonna destroy whatever plays they're trying to do in a particular zone. So I don't know if that's maybe a good way of pitching it, but uh, I just wanted to make fun of leader because I. I mean, there's always ways around this with armor and things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, for sure. But even if you're ahead on turn three, right? Yeah. You're, you're, for your, if your opponent is not playing, you know, one drops or whatever, it's going to penalize, you know, ramp decks or whatever that are playing big cards or, or Shuri decks, oh. let's say. But if there's not a lot of, you're going to have to probably oh. yeet a one drop in it to oh. explode it, you know, which is interesting, oh. right? I, I have something that you're gonna really like. I know you hate Galactus, right? So let's say you have a Galactus nerd. They show up, they're feeling cocky. You just casually slip in that Negasonic on turn five and you're winning the zone already. What's a Galactus player gonna do then <laughs> and on turn six? Yeah, because you know, because uh, the thing about Galactus, you usually you want your opponent, the person that's not playing Galactus to have priority and then you want to go second. But the problem is they play Negasonic. You're, you're, you're kind of screwed at that point going into turn right. six, so locks you out too so yeah. you can't play a card but if you're but winning the zone who cares yeah so yeah. uh yeah i think this one's gonna be a lot of fun i expect a lot of play action from that uh i gotta just say this mobile gamer you're a nimrod i, I swear Ooh. this is like an insult of some sort Ooh. i don't know why but this is gonna be the season pass for gosh i keep forgetting we're in february in april correct uh i'm not really sure but this is gonna be the the, the season pass card after hit monkey is the current rumor yeah so it's it's april yeah so allegedly it's gonna be april this one uh when we talk more about it, it seems more and more interesting the first thing that came to my mind was baseline it's gonna give ways for destroy decks to get into other field other areas that they can't reach so think of a sanctum sanctorum you know only re they're playing a true destroy deck really the only ways of getting there are hoping that wolverine flips on over there or maybe bring it on arnim zola this is one it's kind of like a baby doom where you can just kind of clone this card and get into other sides however if we go a little bit further we think there might be a few situations one you might be have lots of baby nimrods everywhere you just keep destroying nimrods on turn five and six and maybe you're just gonna have a field full of nimrods kind of like almost arnim zoling them because the baby nimrods that are just that were destroyed from the daddy nimrod they right. make their own baby nimrods so it just seems like right. it can just go out of control so it's kind of like a variation uh, of doom and you i'm surprised you thought of this because you're a galactus hater you think there might be a possible world where a turn six galactus is a thing 
Well, okay, so the, the thing about Galactus is it needs ramp, right? Yeah. And there's always been this mythos of a turn six Galactus deck, which is people have been talking about it more and more now that Wolverine's a thing. And the idea is that you play Galactus on turn six, and if Wolverine's on the field and Nimrod's on the field, well, they're going to get into the location that Galactus mm -hmm. has played in. And so maybe that's going to be a thing. Uh, you know, a lot of Galactus decks have two win conditions, either Destroyer or Galactus. Destroyer synergizes with this card as well. Yeah, uh, the Destroyer is going to be a lot of fun because you, if you play Electro, Electro turn three, Nimrod turn five or turn four, uh, Destroyer turn five, destroy all the Nimrods, get rid of the Electro, and then just make Nimrods spread again. So this, I feel like uh, after initial read, I think it's going to do a little bit more than just Even simply. Better. Yeah. Wolverine turn two, Electro oh. turn three, Nimrod oh, turn man. five. Oh, you wait. Know, and the Galactus wait, 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 turn wait. five. Take it a step further. Hulkbuster on Nimrod. Then you destroy oh. it. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, you can forge it, you can Shuri. There's a lot of things you can do, right? Oh man, yeah, all right. This is gonna, I think it's a lot more interesting than what, what meets the eye initially. This one, okay, this one, okay. This one, this one, this one, this one. This is in my definitely top favorite cards I feel like are coming to snap that I want to keep on my radar. I think I'm, if I'm right, I think I convinced you this could be a busted card. You thought oh, this red, like, yeah, yeah, what's the, what's his name? Uh, Stegron, 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 however you say his name. It, what it does is on reveal, move an enemy card from here to another location. So you thought, I mean, you could be right. We don't know exactly how it works until we play with it. You thought this is just like another juggernaut and you thought it's going to kick someone over randomly. I think. Or a random card. Or a random it, card. It, yeah, if it's a random card to a random location, this card is situational. If this is you pick the card and you pick, pick the, the location. location, it's probably one of the most broken cards in the game. I, so when we look at Juggernaut, I'm going to pull up Jug real quick. They describe this very specifically that's not the same as what this card is saying. The key word being randomly. Juggernaut kicks cards to random locations. We don't know where they're gonna go. And sometimes Juggernaut's a little awkward because it's gonna kick a card into a useful zone, maybe in the Sanctum Sanctum. Like, well, shoot. Also another one, Nightcrawler is kind of another one. It lets you just move a card where you want. So the question's gonna be, I, I'm almost certain you can pick what location the card goes to. I'm almost certain because it doesn't have the keyword randomly. What's, what I'm hoping for is yeah, that second I feel, like I feel like it's clunky, right? Because then it creates an extra step, maybe? I, I don't know. Like, if it, it, because here's the thing is it has to, re, the reveal has to resolve, right? Yeah. Because there's no, when you play a card, there's no, so if, when you play a card, there's no guarantee it's going to resolve, right? Mm -hmm. You could be, you could be dropping it into Cosmo, let's say, or blind Cosmo, right? So then what, is it gonna give you like a, this extra clunky daredevil step where you get to move it after the fact? I don't think that's a good idea because that draws out the game. If it just happens randomly like Juggernaut and you just watch it happen, you don't have to have any UI, no yeah. timer. I think adding cards that add timer mechanics and extra steps in general is bad. So I, I just don't see it working that way. I really think it's r move a random enemy and move it to a random location. I agree with you that I think it's a bad idea in terms of dragging out time, but they just updated Thanos in every freaking game. They give you a 10 second animation of the stones going into your deck. Yeah, I don't like that either. I mean, I just feel like it, it was cool the first time, but you know, if I'm playing a Thanos deck, I know that. So I don't need to know again. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like, I don't need to know that I'm Side playing point. Thanos. I hope bro. that's not the animation they were talking about for Thanos. I really, really hope so too. I, yeah. I really hope that, that if you actually play a Thanos with the 21 power, it gives you a special animation. I mean, what I was- uh, yeah. It would be cool, right? That would be cool. Or they just do a 3D infinity stones at the beginning and you see them spin around and they, they shoot off into the galaxy and you got to collect them all i think that would be a cool thing too if they, i just yeah i hope that wasn't the animation just some but cards the animation, the animation for the cards going to the deck is too slow it's and way not too that slow. interesting yeah. but the point i'm getting at there they do it they don't seem to care about dragon time daredevil adds an extra layer of time as well so i don't think they're i don't think they're opposed to you know the I, worst thing in the world to your opponent playing daredevil you play, you pass the turn, and then you wait an entire 10 minutes for them to play Professor X into the lane that's not occupied. I hear you. What? I agree thing. with you. But I think that doesn't mean that they're they're going to make this random for St Stegron. I think, I think it's almost going to be you're going to let your opponent take their time moving a card over. I don't think they're opposed to making things that make a little bit longer. I agree with you, though. So this one's up in the Anyways. air. This 
but it's 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 the difference between being a situational average card to a busted card essentially the most broken card in the game in my opinion 100 percent. yeah like why very. do you you don't even need arrow anymore oh my gosh playing this on turn six like no you, you can't put that card there you put it over there Duh. we'll have to wait and see this could be broken or yeah it could be very situational this one we we debate about snow guard I, I this is another one of those cards that are really up on top of my radar that i would love to get um and we also disagree on which aspect we like about this card so with snow guard one cost which is fantastic and while in your hand this transform each turn into a hawk or a bear we'll talk about what the hawk and the bear do well, part, part number one is does this card after it changes to a hawk or bear will it change again next turn to maybe something else or maybe to the same thing if it you know it's it reads as if it's going to change every turn because each turn if they only want it to happen once it would just be next turn it transforms next turn and you're done so again a little bit of ambiguity i think it's gonna if it's bear one turn i think it's gonna hawk the next turn that's my right. guess because what's confusing is like if the, the word transform is mentioned in the gamma lab yeah. and intar and the cards that are transformed no longer retain their original properties mm -hmm. of ongoing abilities and things like that because when we look at the hawk or bear card if they're actually transformed to that card they no longer are retaining that original ability so whether you know and i think it's up for debate like because it says each turn does this card keep flipping every turn sometimes it's mm -hmm. this card sometimes it's that card or does it transform into a hawk or a bear the hawk or the bear don't have that transform ability anymore so it's gone and then they're just you have one of the two and then you you have like a 50 50 chance of what mm -hmm. card you're gonna get i don't know i think it's that way but i'm not sure yeah so unfortunately snap zone fix your website snap zone they don't show what the hawk and bear do uh but the hawk allows you to ignore enemy location or just ignore location abilities so just pretend there's no death domain pretend there's no sanctum sanctorum the bear allows you to reactivate a location's ability I like the bear, so I, I think it's uh because the locations are easily 50% of what Marvel Snap's all about. If you have the possibility of taking advantage of a location again, I think that's a big deal. You like the hawk a bit more. I mean, how about you explain why you think the hawk's a little bit better? The hawk says ignore all location abilities next turn, next turn and yeah. I wonder if that applies to both people. Are are both sides able to ignore all location abilities for the next turn, or is it just you? If it's just you, that's also very different. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking it's just you because unless it yeah, says otherwise, you, yeah, I don't know. Or whatever, that's very useful, right? If it, especially if it turns off some of the, you know, that, that it's, I think this is going to be a very good surprise card. I think it's going to be high IQ. You know what? I really like Titania, who that's just a hard card to play. I think this is going to be like that as well. Uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna bring up cloak as some uh, past references. It says both players can do something. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading snow guard. It doesn't say both players ignore location. Both players do this and that. I mean, when you're triggering the the effects, like let's say you're triggering Shuri's lab, I'm sure that's gonna. Uh, oof. Would that trigger the opponent's Shuri side as well? Like if you're, it would have to, right? If you're triggering at a location, it should just hit all the cards. But it's only going to be you that can utilize this or even ignore effects. So I think let us play these cards in advance so we can we can yeah. answer questions or give us a you know give every player a couple days to try out the new cards. You know, like like they do in like a League of Legends or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, first of all, right now in the game, there's absolutely no hype about new cards. I mean, a lot of people are like stature who yeah what why but what if every player was given let's say a day or two or 25 rounds where they could play the card you know if they want to you know and then you could we could figure out how it works we can maybe make an assessment on whether it's good or bad and then move on you know a trial run would be so much fun that's it's crazy because when you add new things that should be hype for the community right we're adding a and new character no there's no hype There's around very, it. Yeah. Very little hype on new cards. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like King's the only one that, you know, has hype, but even so, it's just that yeah, giving people a test run for a day or two, a few hours, a few battles, I think that would go to distance. I would love to see that. So that's a, a banger idea there. We got one more card before we get to the exclusive uh, expedited giveaway Living Tribunal. And this just seems busted. My mm -hmm. gosh. Uh, Living Tribunal mm -hmm. at the. So we actually talked to this a while ago. It still it hasn't been released in the game of like 100%, but we read this a while ago. At the end of the game, split your total power evenly among all locations. So an extremely souped yeah. up version of Mr. Fantastic, practically. So if you, like you talked about Mojo World, if you're winning Mojo World, split that power across. 
taking the big shuries of red skull whatever the case might be splitting that power cross so it's not just contained in one zone the craziest thing is this isn't an ongoing effect this isn't an on reveal effect it happens at no. the end of the game so it's going to mess up things like captain marvel because captain marvel does not know how to work of end of game mechanics and on top of that really it seems like the only way to stop this is maybe a leech uh where you can leech him and then it'll, it'll cancel it out cool i mean you have to have more total power on the field for this that to work too. And, yeah and, and and here's the thing i mean it's, it's going to be situational I, let's say i have 20 10 i have a she hulk in one lane and i've got chavez in one lane right i've got 10 power and nine power well i mean for for you to use this card you would have to have 30 total you know 30 three total power for it to work yeah right, right. you know what i mean to have mm -hmm. 11 across all three lanes you know it, it, it's i i don't know i i think it's going to be you know if you get some sort of fluke situation or a busted situation with iron man shuri black panther yeah. or whatever right yeah then it's gonna pay off it's gotta do something like that or you do wong the shuri into red skull and then you split the power across the board or something like that i think there's gonna be mm -hmm. ways to make this busted i think there's gonna be ways to counter it. leech i think valkyrie is gonna be great too if you see someone's putting a lot of power in a zone hit valkyrie and then living tribunals what it's gonna split three power across three right. zones so there's ways to right. counter it sounds busted uh but it seems like a lot of fun if used in the right situation so out of all these cards which one if you had to pick one which one would you buy right now even though you know nothing about these cards because we haven't played them um boy there's so many yeah. to choose from and, and i think it, all of them have their merits depending on whether or not they work a certain yeah. way or not and i feel like we've got too many questions i think of the most broken card will be a Stegron yeah. if it works where you could choose it. Uh, that's the card that it just depends on how it works because they don't mention randomly. Mm -hmm. and I just I just don't think they're going to let you move your, your I just I don't know. I we'll don't know, see. man. Never say never. You don't know. Uh, this is the same thing. If it reads that where we can move a specific card to a specific location. Hell yeah, this is going to look pretty good. But you know what also looks pretty good? We are going to expedite one of these data mine cards to you immediately. So make sure you like this video. And then we're going to double check. You better go to Mobile Gamer's video. Like his video too. Because for everyone who likes this video today, Mobile Gamer, I didn't even tell you what it is. What's the expedited data mine unreleased card giveaway? I don't know, the, I don't know what your giveaway yeah, is. Exactly. Do I'm going to surprise I you. I don't know. I need your honest opinion. We're talking J. Jonas Jameson. <laughs> Did you, do you know what it says? Ruder. Yeah, your ears. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually data mine. I have no idea if it's a joke from the developers, but I don't know. I don't even know. I, you know what? If this is an actual card, I will buy it day one. I will use it in every deck for the future. For your emotes are are going to be a lot more ruder. Miss Marvel, they they changed the finger positioning on her a little bit. You know. <laughs> Wow. oh man okay this is a lot of fun be sure to check out mobile gamers channel anything else you'd like to say before we dip on out of here i don't know all that youtube stuff right tell youtube we're doing an all right job on here and more importantly always remember I remember this i'm gonna quiz you on this and it's great to be and the empire today i'm so proud, so proud.